The universe is incredibly large. It's going into a space, so to speak, without end. And it's been doing that for a long time. As far as I know, it's continuously regenerated. Not just at source. It's not just that all matter is life. All dimension is able to generate and does matter. For dimensions cannot exist but for thought. It's all thought. In a sense, the existence of existence is unfathomable. The substance of what existence is, and substances are, you know, that's the only way of saying it, is what we are. When I say our personhood is fantastically wonderful, the complete opposite really of its apparently finite, distinct appearance. I mean that life and existence and being are all one. We think in a sort of um, pedestrian way that life is the advanced uh, sophistication of lack of life. That you know, you go from nothing mm, to space and dimensions, to space and dimensions that seem to produce something pro matter and the matter produces matter, and the matter forms into stars and galaxies, and continuously. But it's the other way round. Oh yeah, I mean, and the stars might produce, uh, you know, planets and, and life, and sophisticated life like ourselves. But it's the other way round. All the universe is a consequence of being, and being is of thought and personhood. And personhood generates finite manifestation, we might say of itself, what we you know, for instance, we call people in the physical matter alive people doing things, forming civilizations and so on. But they are all consequence of life. When we say God is of the living, the living God. What we mean is, if the word substance were valid, is to say that the substance of all being, all existence, is life. Life manifests as thought, which manifests as um, experience, uh, Manifesting as, you know, like the dreams of matter that seem so concrete to us, time and space and so forth.
life is what generates thought and dimensions just as when you dream you create a whole not just mm, experience but a whole experience within its own dimensions which um, you can roll up and evaporate on waking do you realize and of course we don't what fantastic phenomenon personhood is phenomena is it wrong word personhood is God is the person of persons able to create recreate himself we too we are children of God children of that same phenomenon able to create itself our personhood as a child of God of course is of the same sort as God is the vastness of all that is is encompassed is within in some sense God and us too it's not that matter becomes sophisticated and is able to generate thought it's that thought can be simplified into matter you see in a sense things can only come from above we think of the absence of the finite like planets and people you and I is nothing on the contrary the presence of the planets and uh, you know people beings and so on is a consequence of all things being possible both everything and nothing and the everything organizes and expands itself into the nothing constantly if you like consumes it and uh, expands itself without end in the unfathomable of, of all that can be there is necessarily a situation in which some things are and that starts to order all that can be all of the all that can be we are that we and our Heavenly Father are that we are what's called integrity of faithfulness of gravity purpose and desire that which binds together holds firm strength power it is what is necessarily in the everything that could be you see anything and everything could be and therefore some things are it's not then that one day you know the universe will go out and um, there'll just be dead chunks of matter and, and no more stars, no more galaxies no more um, 
if you like, basic uh, hydrogen gas to generate it all. The simple atoms are forever forming. Everywhere. And where is without end. Um, you might say, where is the um, necessary matter in the universe to explain its behavior? Well, locally it's everywhere, and everywhere is its own locally. Its existence is because of possibility. You know, in other words, when we look at the finest particle of matter, you know, we go down to the atom and, and, and parts of the atom and, and perhaps ether that makes up the atom and what makes up the ether, its being. It's the possibility of being in the end, it's that fine. What we would look at and say maybe, may not be, it can't tell. It's as ethereal as thought. You can't put thought in a dimension, can you? You can only use thought to conceive of dimension. Do you see? Your very self. is some notion of being which is beyond dimensions, space, time, and so on. Is the conceiver of such, and all matter is conceived in this space and time dimension that we might be considering. And the one we consider here is this universe. But we are far more than that. You know, when it says, God is the creator of all, he's the foundation of being. And we are children of God because we are made of him. In fact, all matter is made of him, all, all that we can conceive of with our conceived of brains is of him. And the him is not fathomable or analyzable. You know, it's the potter and the pot again. How can the pot conceive of the potter? It doesn't have the wherewithal to to think. Do you see? We do. We are of God. We might call it dimensions, but return to the awakening of, from this dimension of, this incredibly narrow dimension of finitude, I think I want to say is the word, of being the finite, uh, of being a uh, you know, human being, one of the creatures on one of the planets by one of the stars in one of the galaxies. I might point out in one of the universes, there are many. Dare I say an infinite number. A 
that in your manifestated state, here as a human being, you will see such as awe-inspiring. But you are the foundation of all of it, all it is. The family of God is of beyond dimensions. the state of being that ever could be. I'm not now saying in terms of time because time is just a chosen dimension. I'm saying beyond that. And we are given this awe-inspiring key to well-being. The infinite well-being of what you and I truly are with all the heavenly host. We are given hope. the trust of it all being so. But obviously it is utterly beyond our knowing in this finite state. But we are rescued from it by trust. We choose to believe. Do you know that that incredible ability is the very essence of all being. This astonishing state that we partake of manifested as our ability to trust without knowing. What we also refer to as our imagination, but an imagination, a creativity in the mind that also generates its ability to be. God and you and I are that, an ability to be. All this incredibly vast universe as it appears to us is a consequence of that same, for want of a better word, phenomena. The ability to trust in our imagination. If I may be very practical for a moment, you might look at a room and say, oh, I think it could be this color and we could put furniture there and curtains there and a carpet there. Oh, I changed those windows. I think I'll put double glazing in. And then you set about doing it. Your creativity is the very essence of all being. Life is creativity. Else nothing would have existed. How can such life come to be? if it doesn't come from existence, but causes existence. Well, from this perspective of existence, 
it is quite simply inevitable. It's not that how could it be, it's how could it not be. And in that sense, God and the personhood of you and I are beyond time, beyond all dimensions. We are what life and existence is. Who shall I say sent me, says Moses. Tell them, I am what I am. which is not quite as obscure as it's meant to sound. It's very simply saying, I am what existence is. And the foundation of existence. You cannot explain that from the point of view of its consequence, which is existence. In a sense, you see, if we could put it that way, it is that God is the causal, and you are the causal. It's why the man in the street so values freedom, and why every tyranny is doomed to failure. Being is creative freedom, else it would not exist. None of this would exist but for creative freedom. To say, how did creative freedom get created, is a nonsense. It simply is. It is that the notion of creating from nothing is a misunderstanding. Nothing cannot exist. Therefore the reverse does. Else nothing would exist. Wow. Thank you, Dad. Can I say, Dad, that in spite of this awe-inspiring topic, I just love you. And I'm so glad that you exist and that I exist, of course, to enjoy it. Love you. Love you, love you. Thank you, Dad. As an example, do you realize the incredible that you experience as a fairly regular phenomenon, which is you fall asleep at night and you might not sleep too well as you understand it, which simply means you can remember and were conscious of some of the activity you were involved in, where you created what we call on waking, oh, I had a dream. You from nothing created this fantastic reality called a dream, experienced it, and remembered a trace of it on waking from it, on leaving it, on rolling it up. You kept a few trace memories behind that tell you you were dreaming last night and it was, oh, oh, I dreamt about mum, but we were in a different town, that she was with me on the bus or whatever it was. You know? <laughs> or you dreamt of flying across or swimming and you can't swim normally and, you know, you were doing it in the dream. And you say, I'm waking, oh, it was just a dream, it doesn't exist. You made it exist. For a while. 
you put it together without knowing how to put it together. You just did it. It is what you are. You are pure creativity. As pure in creative ability as God. Born of God, one of God. The result of his thought. That you be a separate creativity to himself. Because he was lonely. <laughs> Besides, he can do all things. So he does. And what we value is more creativity. Of course, else creativity wouldn't exist. Creativity must value itself. Or it would destroy itself. Any creativity that doesn't exist is creativity that's destroyed itself. That creativity which does exist is that which is consistent with itself. Do you see consistency, integrity, faithfulness, substance, all quality of our God, quality of being, volition, intention, imagination, thought, actually everything. It's all a quality of this essence of being that we refer to as God and ourselves. We are quite simply infinitely more than we appear. More than we can think of. For we are the very cause of it. This is our being. Thank you, Dad. Love you. Thank you, Dad. Did you notice too, around 22 minutes through this recording, that it, it might well have occurred to you as it did to me on listening? That's why uh, we picked up that suicide's the, an unforgivable sort of sin, that, oh my goodness, you're destroying life itself. You're bringing to an end the possibility of creativity. That's contrary to the notion of creativity existing, even coming into being. We can't have that. Please don't do that. <laughs> that's the most, ah, oh, that's, that's worse than anything you're suffering. Um, I realize you want a way out because you're, you're desperate, but could I give you the Buddhist key which simply says, everything passes. Everything passes. Even, you know, the awfulness of, say, the persecution of um, the Tibetan monks by um, invading hordes. It comes to an end. Everything passes. You don't need to make it terminate. Because then you also stop what could be. And so much of what could be could be very good. And it's much better than nothing at all. We are existence. We are causality. You know, we're not just causal, we are causality. Our creativity has brought causality into being. 
for a very good purpose <laughs> to preserve our being. <laughs> Well, of course, the world's picked up uh, suicide as, as a sort of crime. <laughs> I mean, how do you punish someone for committing suicide? <laughs> They're not there to treat. You can only punish someone for attempting to commit suicide, and, and that's really not the way to go, because you want to rescue them from such a, um, a despairing state, and everything in us wants to rescue you. That... Um, and that's good to know, isn't it? That the whole world would long to rescue you from this dilemma of wanting self-annihilation. For we are come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Even the most simple man in the street passing you wants to rescue you, will want to rescue you against your will. <laughs> because he knows your will is just at present temporarily preoccupied in self-annihilation, and he wants to rescue you into life. This is the loveliness of the stranger that comes to your rescue. You see, we are all, including yourself, children of God. And he is utterly wonderful. And so are you. And your wonderfulness will be un unraveled and come into full bloom and fullness of life by his care of you. And you may see the present circumstance that you're in as despairable. <laughs> but trust in him is the key. And the more you trust in him, the more you will see in working in your experience, in your life. You're in a classroom. Lessons can appear very hard at times, but we all graduate. We all graduate because of him. He is the creator of the possible and even the impossible. Our God can do anything. He is God. Causality of all. All it is and all that ever will be. And that's infinite. Ah. Thank you, Dad. Yes, and when I say nothing cannot exist, I mean it by definition. If you like, nothing has no substance, no dimension, no, it, it, it doesn't exist. It's like this notion, wasn't it, that, oh, well, light travels through space. What space? Oh, space is nothing. Well, how can it travel through it? Because nothing means it doesn't exist. How can I then travel through it? And that answer's unanswerable, of course. It can't be nothing. So we, we say, well, must be ether, must be um, some sort of string uh, fabric or some, you know, string theory. Um, mm, mm, uh, don't know. <laughs> of course you don't know. Because <laughs> nothing can't exist. I say, yeah, but it's a concept. I say, yes, it is a concept, but it's not a concept you can use because it has no features. It's, um, if you like, in the 
tangible dimension, it's not tangible. It, it doesn't have anything that will do anything for anything. Um, it doesn't have dimension even. How can nothing have dimension? could only have dimension if it is bordered by something, the absence of something else. Oh, well, nothing is all absence. <laughs> yes, but absence has no meaning <laughs> without something <laughs> to compare it with. And, and that, that brings us to the reality of why um, we're outside the garden. We're in the universe of um, uncertainty. It's a creation in itself. And to be a creation, it has, you know, the yin and yang thing. It has the opposites. Um, it has good and bad. You're learning to be um, eternal. And you're learning from experience of the transitory so that you can get a handle on, understand, see what eternal is compared to the not eternal. You're here temporarily in the universe of uncertainty to experience the not eternal, the transitory change and um, uncertainty and uh, scarcity and uh, time, space, and matter that's uh, enabling that to be a, a possible experience for you. This is the school where you're learning to be eternal. <laughs> where you're learning to be an adult, not just a child of God. Hmm. Bless you. Thank you, Dad.